and start again. It's been a really hectic morning, so I apologize. So good morning to everybody on the internet. Uh, everybody else can be here. It's been a long time since we've been able to gather. If you are joining us online, thank you for that. Now's a great time to, to uh, like our Facebook and YouTube pages so that you know, you know when St. Paul Lutheran Church goes live. Um, before the service, there were announcements that were scrolling, and they will be scrolling after the service as well. So uh, please pay attention to those. Sign up for our weekly email. You can do that by going to our website, and there's lots of information on our website as well for, for the ministries that are taking place. So it is good that you are here. It is good that we are able to gather as a people of God. It's good to not just look into a camera, but to see some faces. So thank you for that. Um, but with those things taken care of, I now invite you to turn your hearts towards God as we uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for worship as we listen to our prelude. Please rise as you are able. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 
We gather for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you and also with you. No, go ahead. My bad. Oh, God. 
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceeds all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First lesson is read from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 44. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon those who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the spirit of the Holy Spirit, that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they had heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Word of God. Word of life. And The second reading from the book of 1 John, the fifth chapter, the first six verses. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. 
and the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose the one, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus is the living Christ. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we come to you this day and we give you thanks for the gifts that you have given to us. Be with us, guide us, and help us to know of your love. And help us to love one another as you have first loved us. This we ask in your holy and your precious name. Amen. Love. It's a simple four-letter word. Now, I know we were told not to say four-letter words as growing up. But love is one of those exceptions, right? We're allowed to say love. Now, when we think of the word love, what first comes to your mind? For some, it's, it's the deep love that you have for your, your spouse or your children or your family. For others, it's just a word that is tossed around. And by the, what I mean by that is you have to, I want you to go back with me when my children were in middle school. I wanted my kids, I wanted my kids to have whatever they needed, but also to be smart about it, like any other parent, right? And so, being the naive dad, being the naive dad, and I don't know if it was Michael or Sarah, so it's, we're just going to say it was one of the kids, I heard them say to someone, I love you. And later that day I said, do they have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? And it was Terry that said, no, that's just what the kids say these days. And I started thinking about it and started listening. And she was right. I had completely missed it. If you listen to what the kids were saying as they were leaving, it's like, I love you. And out they went. 
Now, my generation didn't do that. My generation would be, see you later, talk to you soon, whatever. But the word love had become one of those words that just sort of was thrown out there. You know, when we think of the different forms of love, that brotherly love, right? That philo kind of love, if we think about the Greek and, and talk about that brotherly love for one another. I love you, man. Talk to you later. But when we talk about love of spouse, it can be philo love. It can be agape love, which is like the love that God gives us. It can also be eros, which is erotic, which is that love of, of attraction. But the love that God is talking to us, that Jesus is sharing with us today in the gospel is what? Is agape, is love that goes beyond anything. And when we think of that kind of love, are we living up to that? Because if you love one another, there's no greater love than what? To give one's life for another. Outside of your immediate family, how many of you are willing to give your life for someone else? There's one hand. When you think about it, it's serious stuff, isn't it? That's not, that's not how we think of love. You know, it's like, well, you're my best friend, but, or you're, you're a good acquaintance, but you want me to give of my life for you? So let's look at love in the sense of giving of ourselves to help those who are in need. Maybe not in the sense of physically giving of your life, but yes, giving of your life in the sense of are you willing, are you willing to go and give of what is normal, what is a part of your being to help those who are living on the margins? Are you willing to go and help those who are being treated differently than you and me, strictly because they look different than us? Are you willing to go somewhere that is incredibly uncomfortable to you to make sure that people hear the promises and the gift of God's love? And I hope the answer is yes. And that answer can be how we as part of our own beings give of ourselves, of our lives, if you will, for the proclamation of the gospel because Jesus tells us to what? To feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those who are in prison, to visit those who are sick, to take care of those who are in need. We think about the, the promise of, of God's love in our lives and who carried out the promise and the love of God? It was the Samaritan who helped the stranger that was along the road, not all the righteous people who went around the person. So today, a week after we were told that we need to prune the things that aren't producing fruit in our lives away from us. Jesus asks us to abide in him because if we do, love will be there. That the promises of God's love will be there for us and that we are to give of ourselves one another for those in our world. Sometimes that might mean a physical death. 
but it also might mean us giving up the comfort and the and the convenience of what we have. So that others will come to know that gift and promise of God's love as we have already come to know. You see, the gift and promise of God's love is given to all people because we are reminded, each week we are reminded that Jesus died and was buried and was raised so that we would have the gift of new life. We began this service by declaring that Christ has indeed been risen from the dead. We know that our sins have been forgiven and in the waters of baptism we were buried with Christ and raised with Christ to new life. But we are called to do what then? To go into action. Not because that will save us, because it will not. Right? We are saved by grace through faith. It is not of our own doing. It is a gift of God. We were reminded in Ephesians. But because we are saved by grace, we want to go into God's world. We want to proclaim the love of God. We want to serve God in all places. So I hope and I pray that we will do, do just that. That we will be instruments of the love of God through Jesus Christ. No matter where we are. That we will be willing to leave our comfort zone. And to reach out to those who are in need. Because the promise of God's love is given to us. It abides in us. So may the blessings of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you as we journey together, as we share the love of God through Jesus to the world. Amen. of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. <clears throat> no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. <clears throat> Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Today we pray for the Moravian Church, giving thanks for the life and witness of Nicholas Ludwig von Zindendorf, renewer of the church and hymn writer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy. Creating God, the earth praises you, the seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering, especially those we name before you now, spoken or silently. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to these needs in our communities. Be with the dying. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers and mothers who grieve those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who may never have known being a loving mother. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember, all, we remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Let us share the peace uh, responsibly and socially distant. You can wave at each other. Uh, if you're in the same household, hug each other. Uh, online is a great time to, to say peace be with you in the chat section of both Facebook and YouTube. And know that we share God's peace and blessings to you as well. And as always, we want to say thank you to all of you for your incredible generosity. Um, it's because of your generous gifts that we are able to continue, continue to make disciples live faithfully and serve others. There are so many ways in which you, the people of God, have helped make sure so many things have taken place. Uh, beginning with us pivoting over a year ago to start online because, 
because it was not safe to gather in person to today where we are back together in the sanctuary. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're visiting with us online, you can see on your screen that there are many ways in which you can remember the church. Uh, you can go to our website and give electronically, uh, have the bank set up bill pay for you and be convenient in that respect, or you can uh, drop off or mail in an offering. If you are here in person today and brought your offering with you today, we ask that you pl place it in the basket at the door before you leave. May God's blessings be with you. Please be seated. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith, and you who have little. You have been here often, and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow, and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. I invite you to please be seated, and a word of instruction to those who are gathering with us virtually. Um, if you need to pause...
you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts, satisfies the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the
be make disciples, live faithfully, serve others. Thanks be to God.